I've said this again and again, but you guys aren't listening to me. You're a bot. You're coded. $5 million, $5.2 million, $7.2 million. I know things that you guys don't know. I'll put it in Fortnite terms. NPCs are people that operate off of default scripts. Your brother. What did I do? Because your brother was operating oh, off of a no. default script. It's okay, brother. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Luke Belmar came from nothing, made some money with Ecom, and then multiplied it exponentially through a few well-timed investments. He now has one of the biggest personal brands in the business and self-improvement space, all thanks to his provocative yet wildly viral short-form content, which we confront him on in this episode. Just the water. Can we get some water oh, yeah. going? Ooh. No, this is, bro, kids got jokes, bro. Drinking tap water now? <laughs> Luke Belmar. How are you, brother? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Welcome back to the internet. Thank you. Good to have you. you. For Who are you? Uh, my name is Luke Belmar. I am an entrepreneur, digital entrepreneur now. I come from Argentina, came here at the age of 16, and make money online, try to help people, and level up. Now, who are you, brother? That's who I am, bro. Is that all you are? I mean, there's more to me, but if we get down deep into the conversation, it might take longer. But yeah, that's a general premise of it's uh, a podcast. Who I am. <laughs> it's a nonchalant podcast. <laughs> You're being very nonchalant. I am being nonchalant. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about uh, what you mean by who am I? What are you trying to know? What do you stand for? Mm. I think when you start looking at my content, my content kind of reflects my my ideology. Mm -hmm. I think I want to be very transparent with what I think and how I portray it. I think my philosophy of life can be boiled down to probably one statement, mm -hmm. which is as you think, so you are. And it's this concept that everything originates in the mind. So who am I? I'm a person that can be whatever they want in determination to the attitude that they have and to the objectives that they may have in life. So I have chosen to be a person that exemplifies virtue goodness equanimity calmness and nonchalantness nonchalantness maybe a little <laughs> bit here and there so you chose to be a drop shipper i didn't basically. choose i didn't actually choose to drop ship drop shipping kind of chose me <laughs> when i got into the internet game right i wanted to find a way to make money and the first vehicle that i found just happened to be drop shipping i think it was mm -hmm. at beginning of 2016 and i was like it works. I didn't have a lot of money. I started and within a couple of months, I was able to generate a couple of thousand dollars. So I knew it was a viable business model and I just scaled it from there. Was that back in Argentina? No, 2016 was here in the yeah. US. Okay. Yeah. And how, how high did you scale? Because I've heard crazy numbers. No, I've done, I've done $16 million total revenue okay. in e-commerce, but my top month was 1.1 million. We heard about a $5 million. Oh, $5 day. million. Dollars. That was in crypto. Yeah. That was in crypto. Yeah. Okay. $5 million, $5.2 million, $7.2 million, $3.2 million loss all over the place, brother. But most of my money has been, has been made in the markets. Yeah. What was your first big break? Well, e-commerce, e-commerce was my big break. Well, I would say before that, my big break was identifying that you can actually make money online and identifying the markets. So when I was waiting tables, a fellow server, he introduced me to the concept of marking markets. He gave me a book, uh, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, and I read it. I remember reading it on the train on the way to work, then I would have to take the bus. And I would just read that book. And then he introduced me to Bitcoin, it was $600. And I was like, this is expensive. Like, well, that's a lot of money. I didn't have $600. And that was kind of my breakthrough as, as to the information actually existing. Most people don't even get to that point. My first breakthrough in revenue per se, uh, probably 2020, 2020 is when I would say <clears throat> I went from hustling to really becoming an entrepreneur, mm. which is different. You can make money online. doesn't mean you're a business owner. What's the difference? Well, working in the business versus mm -hmm. working on the business. If you're working in the business and money's only generated by your appliance of labor, then you're just self-employed. If you stop working, you're unemployed. Right. That's not running a business. That is just working for yourself. Building a business is building systems, operations that are scalable and sustainable regardless of your presence. So if I'm setting up the lights, it's not a business. <laughs> it's not that it's not a business, but it becomes a business when you find an individual that if you're not able to set up mm -hmm. the lights can do it for you.
Now we do have to interrupt today's episode to thank the sponsor AutoDS, which can help you start a real business. E-commerce is a great way to make money online and dropshipping allows you to do so with very little startup costs since you can sell products without holding any inventory. And so AutoDS is your one-stop shop for all of your dropshipping needs. They start as a platform that handles and automates the fulfillment portion of dropshipping. So you don't have to worry about the logistics behind your orders arriving to your customers. You can set them up to automatically fulfill all of your orders with shipping times on some of the products as low as like two to three business days. But now on top of that, they've went on to build other tools into their platform. They can provide an AI generated store built for you automatically so you can get started quicker than ever. You can use their winning product section to find a product to sell and then use their TikTok ad spy tool to figure out what ads are currently being used to sell that product. And there you can even find competitors' websites who are selling the same product, which is a massive cheat code to see a winning dropshipping funnel on the same product that you're trying to sell what more can you ask for? So feel free to check them out using the link in the description. And now let's get on with the episode. Should everyone be running a business? No, I don't think everybody should be running a business. I think people need to find what makes them happy. What is their vehicle to success? Because even making money can be a spectrum. I know people that are happy making $5,000 and I know people that are unhappy making $50,000. So the premise is first figuring out what does success mean for you? Why do you want to make money in the first place? Because after X amount of dollars, you know this, after X amount of dollars, what do you buy? Mm -hmm. Nicer, bigger things of the same thing, a bigger house, a better car, a better plane ticket. There's just spectrums of the same thing. So once you find gratitude and contentment with just existing, making money is kind of a spectrum. So yeah, that would be my opinion. Right, but I hear you saying this right now, but I'm also hearing you say, Making $10,000 a day, that's nothing. You it is nothing because it's nothing in the context of what I want to accomplish. Let me give you a premise. You make a $10,000 a day. Mm -hmm. Let's say you take home $3 million after everything's said and done. You want to go buy a house, a normal house. Okay. That's half a million dollars. Evaluate that versus the amount of money that you've generated. You're talking about 15, 20% of your money directly to a house. So when you evaluate a million dollars versus how expensive things actually are, you begin to look at a million dollars, not for what a million dollars is known to be for, mm -hmm. but for the purchasing power that it actually holds. So when you evaluate $10,000, yes, you can live off of $10,000, very fine. But for what I'm trying to accomplish in life, it's not enough. I have to feed a hundred families. I have a hundred employees. They have a hundred families. That requires a lot of money. In order to build operations of scale, business versus self-employment, you need to make a lot of money. And to think that, oh, it's a lot of money is capping your mentality and possibility of scaling. So to me, not a lot of money. But but that's for you. But when you're putting it out on the internet, you're getting millions of views. Absolutely. And all those people that are watching it, they might be happy with $10,000 a month. Perfect. Not even a day. Yeah. So do you think it's a little downplaying no. their achievements? No, are you I, saying I, it just to get a clip? No, I think, I think, it's, I think it's the truth. I think you can be in a situation whereby you can face the reality at the fact that you can live with not a lot, like $10,000. I can go to 80% 80, 80 of places in the world and live for a very long time with $10,000. But is it a lot of money? No, it's not. But to say that it's a lot of money is the fallacy. So to say $10,000 is a lot of money, it's not a lot of money. Per day, we're talking, right? Per day, bro, it's not a lot of money. Now you may say, whoa, it's a lot of money. Perfect, what is the context? Are you a single guy that lives in a one bedroom apartment that spends $2,000? It's a ton of money. You I run an enterprise, context. you run an enterprise, you build an empire, you have a lot of employees, you have a lot of staff, the context becomes different. But you need the mindset of saying, hey, this, there's potential, there's scalability, there is more opportunity, there's abundance, as opposed to saying, oh, this is enough, this is good. And people can say this is enough, this is good, and they can cap themselves there. I just choose not to. Would you be friends with me if I said this is, this is okay with me? Or, or you, do you associate with people like that? How much money do you make? Six figures. We're here together. What if he said below six? It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> you know, it's like what, it, it's the assumption that money is what makes you valuable. I never said money is what makes you valuable. I just said $10,000 is not a lot of money. And I still will stand by that point, but that, that has no intrinsic play in who you are as a person. Let me give you an example. 
Charlie Munger, he passed away recently. We know Rest this. Peace. Berkshire Hathaway, multi-billionaire. He comes from a really rough background. He got divorced in his uh, late 20s. This was back in the day when divorce was like really frowned upon. His kid died uh, while he was in his early 30s. So this guy goes through the trenches, then becomes a multi-billionaire. In this entire process, if you assume that money is what identifies him, then who he became from the trenches to come up, then none of that is worth anything because he had no money. But if you evaluate just the value of somebody by what they have, which is just money, that's not a really good metric because if money's all that you have, you don't have much. What if all you had was a money bank account ready to go liquid, but you were individual? Nobody was around you. You were unhealthy. You were drinking tap water all day. <laughs> it wouldn't be a wealthy life. And I think what I teach or what I like to share or what I believe is that wealth is a mindset of abundance in every area of life, in your relationships, in your health, in your ambition, in your desire, in your pursuit of goals and happiness. And I don't think uh, it's bad to one, identify that maybe you don't have an abundance mindset, maybe you have a scarcity mindset and that it's okay to change it. And I will say this, the school system, and mm -hmm. I, that's why I appreciate people that make content on the internet and add, add, add the ability to make it interesting for people to consume content because the education system has allowed people to adopt mental frameworks and mental models like that of scarcity. Like, oh, making this amount of money is fine. Making this amount of money is okay. Uh, settling for this lifestyle is fine. You need to identify, do you truly believe these things? Or are these things that you've been conditioned to believe? And that's a conversation that you truly have to have because you can you might arrive to the conclusion that maybe your worldview at the current moment is not the best possible worldview. And that's the question. Have you adopted the best possible worldview for your life? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, perfect. Continue on your path. If the answer is no, figure out other worldviews that you can extract from that are beneficial to you. Leave the rest and continue on your way. If Luke Belmar can provide some sort of value to you, anything, take it. And whatever's not, and the way, leave it. If it was a video game, you would interact with all the characters, figure out what are, what are the clues, and move on. Why wouldn't you do the same with me? I'm just another dude. Fair enough. You're a big school hater, huh? I'm seeing crazy stories of, of F I'm a, school, I'm a, of I, this, of that. It's not a school, that. bro. I think school's great. It's, it's, what are they teaching? It's the education that is put through the school system. That is the problem. So when you have, for example, let's say history. Let's talk about okay. history. How do you know that what is written in history books is true? It's not necessarily true. The winner always writes the history book, so I don't disagree with you there. So now you have somebody, would you say that the teacher that teaches history, let's mm -hmm. say the fourth grade teacher, I'm not talking about PhD, high level education. Would you say the fourth grade teacher actually is well educated on the truth of history or she's just regurgitating the syllabus? But is there a better way to do it? Self-education. So the, the fourth the, grader has to, join capital club and no i mean capital club is not for fourth graders capital club is actually for aspiring and developed entrepreneurs but for a fourth grader mm -hmm. maybe as a parent uh, or as an older brother you give a child a book instead of giving them an ipad you take them out for a walk and teach them the value of health and nutrition as opposed to taking them for marshmallows and ice cream yeah those things are fine but what are you developing? You're under the assumption that education is merely contextual to student teacher sitting at a desk. This is education. You guys are teaching me. I'm teaching you. We're teaching each other. And if you can start learning from your environment, you can start learning from the data sets that reality gives you, it becomes a little bit different. But is that scalable? Like if everybody, is that really the best way if we relied on everybody just teaching their younger brothers and their younger siblings? Do you have siblings? I do. Uh, younger or older? Older. Okay. You're, you're the youngest? Mm hmm So it would be hard for you to understand uh, what it's like as an older brother to take care of a younger brother. Regardless of how you may feel about that, that's the truth because you simply aren't in that position. It's like saying that you can understand what it's like to be a father if you've never had a kid. You just can't as much as you want to think that you can. As an older brother, and I have younger brothers, my job is to teach them. Teach them what? Teach them the things that I've done that are wrong and teach them the things that I've done right so that they don't have the same. Even if you're young, 
you can do the same thing with your older brothers. I would hope and assume that you're wise enough to when you spot and identify your brothers falling or faltering or failing, that you correct them, that you teach them, that you educate them. If they have a, a faulty mental framework, that you come to them and you're like, hey, you know what? Let me show you this. Let me learn from you. Learn from me. And you create an environment of what? Winners. Right now, a lot of people just pushing each other down, bro. A lot of bad mindset, a lot of negativity, a lot of uh, jabbing at people aspiring to be great. Why can't we elevate each other? Why can't we learn from each other from a place of authenticity and truth? Now, how I do it, my model of doing it, I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's authentic. It's me. Mm. And if people can embody themselves and we can create a culture and environment where people can be themselves and learn from each other, Yes, I do think that everybody can do it. Have you taught TJ anything? <laughs> I think so. Let's ask him. That's my little brother, by the way. Hey, brother. <laughs> I mean, quick, <laughs> quick story. I always tell this to people, but back in the day, it was like 2018. I was trying to do drop shipping. I had my first little store. I was selling like a little, like some, some little slime thing or something like that. I go to him, my, my older brother, my bigger brother. He starts flaming me like crazy, telling me not to do drop shipping. So I never did it. And then 2023 rolls around. I go to Beheza. <laughs> he helps you start up a store. We run it up, and um, they got the six figures. So I mean, what did you learn from what? From what you just told me. Business. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> what did you identify mm. in your brother's broken mental framework mm. that allowed him to belittle you in such a way that he didn't believe that you had the capabilities? to do what you set out to do. What do you think, brother, was the mental framework that allowed him to, whether he was willingly or unwillingly, belittle you? Because that's a common thing that happens when you have bro broken mental frameworks. What do you think? Uh, maybe maybe it was, it was just his experience with the whole dropshipping thing, you know? And I mean, I wouldn't say it didn't work out for him, but maybe he didn't like it too much. And he would put that mentality on me. But at the same time, you know, that happened, but there were times when, when he did put me on some sauce, you know? Perfect, so under that premise, cause it's, it happens to everybody, right? It happens, I, I have coaches that mentor me and sometimes they, they limit me with their belief system. But what if you had had success with e-commerce? Would your worldview had changed and would your information and your data sets, right? And what you knew about the world would have taught him something different, would have been different? Yeah, 100%, I, I agree with what you were saying where he should exper experience other people's uh, opinions, not just mine. Yeah. You know, if I had success in something else, with, if it's crypto and I put you on crypto, yeah. but I tell you not to do drop shipping, yeah. that doesn't mean I'm right. That just will work and for me. And that's exactly it. You have to be able to sit down with people and pull from them, learn from them. Yeah, maybe you pull this, maybe you don't pull that. Okay, yeah, Luke made money in e-com. Am I the best e-com guy in the world? No, nor do I claim to be. Where do I, no, I've just made money with e-commerce yeah. and I made money investing but I know how to scale and build digital businesses. Am I the best in the world? No, but I'm me. And I'll tell it to you straight to your face. So you know how I see it. It's the reason the information that you gave him was the information that you gave him was be it, it was because it was based off of the information that you knew. And what I'm trying to convey to you is that I know things that you guys don't know. That's why when I sit here and I, and just like you guys know things that I don't know, but when I say these things and I share with you, like the importance of applying the, ludicrous belief that everybody can truly become successful. It's a ludicrous belief. And? Can you put that in Fortnite terms? What does that mean? <laughs> I'll put it in Fortnite terms. Everybody thinks that most people are gonna be unsuccessful. That's why most people are unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. Why can't we walk around wishing the best of people? Looking at some, bro, I, I went to a hotel. I know it sounds crazy. I went to a hotel, the guy was, uh, mopping the floors. I, he was a janitor. I've done janitor work, so we're just talking. And he's sitting down with his phone during his break, scrolling through TikTok. And I literally go and sit down with him. We're having mate, we're sipping mate. It's an Argentine herb tea. And I ask him, hey, what are you doing on your, in your free time? I was like, why is it that you're choosing to do this? And we start chopping it up. 10 minutes in, he tells me that he used to own a business, but that he quit because he went into debt. He couldn't make it, he lost hope. And where did he end up? A janitor. Why? Not because a janitor is a measly job, but because he didn't have the right tools, the right knowledge, the right circle, the right information 
and he lost hope. You know why he lost hope? Because the environment around him told him that he was going to lose. But mm. what if the environment around him was positive and empowered? And so you know what I said? Bro, go back and start the business again, bro. What, else, what, are, what am I going to do? Sit down and tell him how to do dropshipping? No. But I, I can encourage you. Hey, bro, you got this. If you were able to do it once, you can do it again. Do you never scroll TikTok? I scroll TikTok. Bro. Uh. <laughs> I scroll TikTok, <laughs> but I scroll it with a different intention. I actually find it as a really good tool to recruit talent. Really? Yes. It's a really good place to find uh, talent that is really good. And I think that it's a good place for sourcing new hires. Is, that, it is that how you're justifying it, though? Do you ever just scroll like doom scroll? <laughs> I would say I doom scroll Instagram stories a bit, bro. Mm. It's the swipe, doom swipe, bro. Doom swiper. <laughs> I'm a doom swiper, bro. But it seems like you, you're really familiar with the TikTok algorithm because you kind of just, you blew up almost out of nowhere. Like I, I didn't hear about you and the next thing you know, I'm seeing you everywhere. Was that mm. super premeditative? What, what was your plan with that? It, it didn't start off as a plan and it kind of became a plan as, uh, as it worked. Mm -hmm. But I think the message is very simple because I've only made probably about a dozen YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've done a couple live streams and a couple podcasts. I think my message is consistent. I think people resonate with it. And I, that's why I think people like it. Yeah, there may be some flaming content, maybe some content that's controversial, but for the most part, the content that people stick with and the comments and the feedback that I get is that it's a net positive. So mm. I think the internet, there's a lot of drama. I think it's very easy to get quick likes and quick views. And I think now there's a pendulum swift uh, switch and a pendulum kind of swing towards authenticity. And I think people resonate with that. I would like to believe that a reason for my virality and for people resonating with this is because I don't really attach myself to the message that, I, that I'm speaking. I don't think it's my message. I think these are fundamental truths of the world and I'm just sharing them in the way that I've experienced them. I'll give you kind of an example. When you called me the other day, um, I was excited to talk to you because I think that you have a great platform. I think you have a great platform because you are both funny and you have the ability to introduce concepts in a way that people can digest them. And I challenged you to something. I said, figure out the purpose for your content, not just make content for ad sense revenue. Like, yeah, okay, cool. Figure out how you can build something that outlasts you, build something with purpose. And this, this takes a long time. This takes a lifetime to build. And my entire premise in doing this, now that I've been able to make money, because I've been able to build a personal brand in the past, I just didn't. Why? Because I didn't want money to be the motivating factor that moved me towards talking. If I need to have AdSense on and say and filter certain things in order for me to make money, then I'm no longer working for myself. I'm working for YouTube. And I wanted to get to the place where I could be financially independent. And if I was to build my personal brand, it could be somebody that I was proud of mm. presenting. And I'm proud of the version that I am today. But therefore, I'm public. But you're still making a ton of money on the yes. personal brand. Yeah, a ton of money. So, I mean, like the AdSense being off is one thing, but you can talk about, the, yeah, but the, but the personal brand isn't what, what isn't what is making money. What is making money is that I've built a product and a company that serves people well and people like it and people share it and people enjoy it. If not, people wouldn't buy it. And if you look at my process of commercialization, you look at my landing pages, I don't promise anything. I just have a club. I have a community of entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs that want to create, multiply, and preserve wealth. What is wealth? Wealth is abundance in every aspect of life. It's not just money. So if people resonate with that message, join me on this journey. If not, on your way, brother. We're continuing on this journey to a, mo a million glitches all around the world, with or without you. What's glitches? Glitches in the matrix, bro. There's two concepts. You, you see bots. You've heard this concept of NPCs. NPCs are people that operate off of default scripts. Your brother. <laughs> pointed at you. Yes, because, oh. because your brother was operating oh, off of a no. default script. It's okay, brother. It's not a big deal. Please. Your brother Man. was operating off of a default script. Was. It was. I'd made that very clear. Mm -hmm. Was operating <laughs> off of that. And, and that, this is the thing. This is the thing. When somebody identifies the NPC in us, in us we need to have the humility to be okay, to be like, oh, yo, yo, okay, this person is trying to check me out of automation. So what I'm conveying here is your brother was acting out of 
preconceived autopilot decision making. He instilled that through you. His NPC ness, right, <laughs> was being diverted to you. He turned you into an NPC. Uh -huh. He NPC'd you. <laughs> Collateral damage. I'm trying to do the opposite. The glitch is the opposite than the person that runs off of the default scripts. The person that is a glitch runs off of their own scripts. They don't fit in. They are an anomaly. I think you're a glitch. I think you're a glitch in the make in the making. I think you still have a lot of preconceived notions about reality. You like what? I would say, I would say part of your identity hides behind comedy, mm. which is good. And I've seen this because I have a lot of friends that are comedians and that are really good with jokes, but that doesn't allow for people to see you the way that I was able to see a part of you that I think is really special. And I think that that's what you're trying to do with this podcast. And I think if you can bring that part out, extract the YouTuber and just people be able to sit with the wisdom that you've been able to accrue and that, bro, you've been able to build a business. I mean, I'm still should, setting up the lights, but. Brother, how old are you? 22. You should be very proud of yourself. You have things to teach. How you teach them, how you convey, how you inspire. That is your duty. But I think I want to teach through comedy. Yes, That, that you attracts can. people. Yes, So why good. would I change? You don't want to change that. Okay. But once you attract people, mm -hmm. good. How are you going to impact people? How do people get to know you beyond being a Kevin Hart or a funny YouTuber that makes viral videos? How do you, tr how do you fundamentally to the core radically change somebody's life based off of not business, but based off of your belief in your worldview? And how do you allow the things of the world to blur your purpose on why you're actually here? What was the question of that? I don't know. We're just uh, having a nonchalant <laughs> conversation. <laughs> it's nonchalant. Oh, but you know yeah. what I mean, bro? It's like, no, I agree with you. I do. And that's, that's why we're starting the podcast. Yeah. I think you can have a much and bigger I support impact. you guys. I support yeah, you guys fully. I mean, yeah. I appreciate that. Cause you're here. You, you've never even watched an episode, but you're taking a risk on us. You're buying in early. So we do all really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I, I want people to be able to get to know you guys, be able to know your ups, be able to, uh, hear your doubts, mm -hmm. be able to hear your convictions. What do you stand for? What do I stand for? Yes. What do you stand for? What is the, what is the underlying principle of truth that governs your life? Jesus Christ. Then how do you embody that? And how do you show that to your one point plus million people? And do they know that? I'd say some of them know that, but not everyone. Perfect. So if that's your belief system and that's mm -hmm. what you're pushing, then I, I would assume, I don't want to say that this is what you need to do. I would assume that your purpose in life is everything that you do guides towards that beacon. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm conveying is don't lose that foresight. What's your beacon? Finding truth. I'm still looking for it. Have you gotten close? The thing is, truth is very elusive. What do you mean by that? It's it, it always keeps you on your toes because the moment you think you know the truth, the more you realize that you don't know a whole lot. And I think Solomon is probably the great example of a man who didn't ask for belief systems. He didn't ask for dogma or religion. When God came to him in a dream, he asked God for one thing. He asked God for wisdom. And what is wisdom? Wisdom is knowledge put into practice. Knowledge is to know. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But unless you act upon that truth, faith without works, faith is dead. Faith is the physical manifestation of what you believe. So unless I see the fruits of your belief, how do I know that you believe what you believe besides your words? So if you say, Luke, what do you believe? Just look at what I do. Don't, that's it. Do you classify yourself as a religious person, as a Christian? Because you just brought up Solomon. I mean, I think Solomon was a person that was pursuing truth. Mm. And I think he's also a person that obtained the highest echelons of power, the highest echelons of wealth, the highest echelons of womanization mm. that the world has ever seen. You want a thousand concubines? This man got them. But in the book of Lamentations, he says, all is vanity. Mm -hmm. So if the wisest man in the world says all is vanity. And I read that as somebody that wants to be wise. Now, what do I understand that all is vanity? Why? Not because he said it, but because I begin to evaluate the things that he in the world tells you that fill you up. Paradise, kingdom, money, 
And then you get those things. And, okay, now what? You've made a million dollars. How do you feel the next day? Nothing. Okay, it's you made all it. right. Yeah, it's all right. Does it solve your in intrinsic problems in life? Does it solve the relationship that you have with your parents? Does it solve the relationship that you have with yourself? Does it solve your insecurities? Maybe, potentially, maybe it tapes it, maybe it masks it. But if you wanna find that out for yourself by making some money, dropshipping may be a great vehicle to do so. And AutoDS, the sponsor of today's episode, is your one-stop shop for all of your e-commerce needs. You already know that they can help you create a store find winning products, spy on people's TikTok ads, show you competitors' websites. But what they're really known for is fulfilling orders, right? You connect them to your store and they'll handle and automate the whole back end of actually sourcing your products and making sure they arrive to your customers without you having to worry about it. Which used to be the big problem with dropshipping. Customers would get angry when their orders would take months to arrive from dropshippers who couldn't find a good supplier. Or you as a dropshipper could get scammed and your orders would never arrive to the customer. Small scale, that could lead to chargebacks, but on a big scale, if you're getting a ton of orders, that can completely wipe you out of the business. So AutoDS targets all the major pain points of dropshipping under one service, and you can check them out using the free trial link in the description below but to say that this one thing is the underlining solution to all your problems in life i would say mm, not so i don't know if you answered though i don't know if i answered who knows <laughs> i don't even know what the question was what was the question it was what, what's your belief because you, br you yeah bring my, but my belief of... no, you asked me you asked me do you are you religious no i i think i'm just a person seeking truth and the mm. example is i'm taking the person that i believe to be a reference point solomon why do i take him as a reference point just read proverbs and see if that's a good business model and a good life model to adopt, then you might actually become successful. If I see all the billionaires out here telling me, yo, read Proverbs, read Psalms, because it's full of game, why am I not gonna read it? So am I a person that identifies with labels? No. You know why? Why? Because to you, Christian may mean something. To him, Christian may mean something else because it is a symbol that represents something. So for me to identify as that symbol means that now I identify through your lens of what that symbol means. So I am mm. without symbol. You have to view me as an autonomous individual and get to know me. And then you can attach your labels in due time as you get to know me. Sure. What's like the best way to figure it out? Or like, how, how do you put yourself well, in you a say he's figuring it out still. It's like, I would say first recognizing that we don't know everything. Like, it doesn't matter how much success you achieve, you can still learn things from everybody, what to do, what not to do. So I would say curating a group of people that help you think, I think that's important. Curate a group of people, a circle around you, friends, where you can have these conversations. You guys as brothers, like you guys should be flaming each other. You guys should be grilling each yeah, other's beliefs. I, I do. That's good <laughs> because you're not gonna have a lot of people in your life that are gonna do that, right? So if you can have this relationship, you need to cherish it deeply. That's the first part. The second part is asking the most important question in the world. Why? Why to everything? Why? Why? It's the question that all authority gets, gets, gets what? Angry when you ask them. Ask your teacher, ask your parents, ask your pastor. Why, 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 why? If you ask them why enough to the point where they get to, I don't know, <laughs> which everybody gets to. Of course. That's when people get mad. But if you can get to the, I don't know, and instead of getting mad, get intrigued. That is where you find truth, brother. Mm, okay. Yeah, but you, how do you put yourself in, in a circle of people that you can trust and people that can, you know, become you the, the type of person that attracts individuals of caliber? I'm sitting with him here today. I don't know you, gentlemen, but hopefully you can build a relationship one day. I don't know him very well either, besides the couple of videos of content that I've seen floating on the internet over the last couple of years. The reason I'm sitting with him today here isn't because of this right now, but it's because of the seeds that he planted himself that are today being manifested. So he became the type of individual that I cared to contemplate and have a conversation with. And I don't have conversations with everybody. The point is, if you want to have winners around you, become the type of person that winners want to have around. A winner's not gonna hang out with a loser, so become a winner. It only makes sense. If you wanna have a beautiful girlfriend, you can't be out here doing things that that individual wouldn't be attracted to. You need to do the things that are going to attract the circle that you want with you. Speaking of that, are you open about your relationship online? No, 
I, I not that's a, the only part that I don't talk about. Yeah. Not one bit. No, no, not one bit. We'll we'll clip that part out. Okay. That's the only that's I that's the only sanctity in my life, bro. Yeah. Okay, I respect that. Yeah, yeah. Too much too much online to uh to bring in family, you know. Mm-hmm. Do you have an opinion on it? Just like Yeah, I think government marriage is a fraud. So mm. getting married under the government you're not getting married under God. You've just gotten married under the, under paper. It's a, it's a psyop. I think getting married under God and faithfulness to one woman is my preference of life. And I think it's the best life. Why? For multiple reasons. Every time you sleep with a woman, you taint her and she taints you, whether you like it or not. And I just refuse to be tainted by people or marked by people that I do not know. So I've only decided to know one person. And with that, I'm content. So you disagree with the Tate perspective of multiple wives and all of that? I mean, is it, it's, I wouldn't say it's a Tate perspective. I would say it's, a, it's quite a global perspective of doing whatever you want. Now, I've just adopted the lifestyle and the belief system that one woman for me is enough. And I'm satisfied with that. And that works. I respect that. Do you plan on having kids with that woman? Not right now. Ever? Th- not right now because I think part of my, I know it's may sound a little bit cliche, but I think that there's plenty of kids out there that need parents, bro, already. Mm. I think I, I kind of have a passion towards adopting kids. There's too many kids out there that need parents. Yeah. What are you naming your first kid? Hmm? What, are you, what are you naming your first kid? That's uh, interesting you say that. His name will be Spartacus. Spartacus, why yes. is that? Because Spartacus uh, led a revolution to free the slaves. Yeah. And I guess my next question is, is it possible to get so far out of the matrix to the point where you like loop back around and get back into the matrix? Of course, brother. And the how question, is that? But the, the thing is, we're all in the matrix. You're never getting out of it, bro. Mm. You have a credit card, you're in the matrix. Mm-hmm. I just got one. <laughs> you, you're watching my on TikTok, you're in the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Are you out? No, bro. I'm trying to figure out how to play the game. Right. I did I see don't you pr- drinking tap water earlier, so that makes sense. Still in the matrix. <laughs> you should sell some of these bo- bottled by 12. White label. White, hey, you want to drop ship water bottles? Bro? I might. The tap water. Tap water brand. <laughs> um, it actually is a good idea. But, yeah, I'm, I don't plan on having uh, kids. That's not my uh, perspective. You plan to have kids? Yeah. I want to have a few, like one or three. Bo- one, two, three. Boys? Boys? <laughs> girls you i'm gonna care. i'm gonna shoot for boys but <laughs> you're gonna shoot for boys is that no pun intended or is that pun intended funny are you still drop shipping nah bro why no. why not it's i make too much money in other places mm. i have my private equity firm mm-hmm. i have my trading firm and i have my ventures inside capital club so you, you want to drop your most profitable product like my most profitable product that i ever sold my most profitable product was these sanitizing uh, tablets that you would utilize for like uh, cleaning clothes. So you would put them in uh, the dishwasher, you would put them in the um, washing machine or in the plate washer, and they would just clean your plates. I sold household products, boring. Really? Yeah, dude, why wouldn't I sell sanitation household products during? That's what I was gonna say. Was this during the virus? Yeah. So I was like, I can't sell hand sanitizers and I can't sell masks, but people still need cleaning supplies and other cleaning mm-hmm. their house. So they're stuck in their house. They so need why not price stuff. gouge them? Well, I didn't price gouge them. I just sold something that was completely within the terms and conditions of uh, Facebook, which mm-hmm. is pretty good. It worked. Was and that a, was that an AliExpress product? Of course, brother. But how do you? What's the, yeah? What are the everything? 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 When you say AliExpress product, what do you mean? Let's, let's, let's break down the myth of AliExpress. Do you know that AliExpress are actually dropshippers? Mm-hmm. It's people that are dropshipping manufacturers. Yeah. So when you say AliExpress, only a noob dropshipper pulls anything from AliExpress mm. because people from China are listing and dropshipping those same products and then going to the manufacturers. I have my own manufacturing. I have my own 3PLs. I have my own private party logistics. So in the essence of, can you find my products on AliExpress? Sure, because manufacturers can literally post them there, like you would post them on Amazon, but they weren't AliExpress products. They were okay. sourced and manufactured by my own team. What What are the logistics behind like a, a million dollar month drop shipping? It's not that hard. I would say that 
one, inventory, and two, you need liquidity to scale. But if you're drop shipping, how do you manage that inventory? You need to be able to pay for it up front. Okay. You, bro, drop shipping, this idea of, oh, you pay for money, like pay for, pay for your products after you receive the money. Mm -hmm. This only works at low scale. You know this, you start doing 20, 30 K days. You have to start buying inventory up front. You have to start buying a week of inventory. You have to start figuring out P and L's. You have to start seeing mm -hmm. if they have inventory. You start scaling even higher. You have to call the manufacturer, see if they can produce in time. So it goes from drop shipping quickly becomes e-commerce. Yeah, so that's, that's not drop shipping either. It's that, well, you transition from right. it, right? So that's how I go. We, we grab a product. All the top e-commerce guys test drop ship. As soon as it works, white label. As soon as it works, build their own supply chain. Mm -hmm. So you had At this- At scale, you have to do it. Right, so you had this huge come up with drop shipping, and then you funneled that money into crypto. All of it. You wrote it, sold. Are you gonna be buying back in? It's a great question. I was talking with Luca, Luca Nets, before this podcast, and we were talking about crypto. The Bitcoin ETF, will 99.9% .9 approved approval rates. It's happening. It's going to get approved. But what happens after it, I have no idea. How I'm gonna get in the market, I think I wanna get in building products this time around. I kind of invested in things, but I think there is a possibility to just build cool products inside crypto. So I think my approach is gonna be different. I'm gonna probably pull away from being like a market investor, a trader, to probably getting more hands-on in the game. Are you familiar with, what are they called? The ISO 2022? Yes, 222. Yeah, somebody was telling us- um, XRP and stuff. Yeah, you gotta get into that because the government is adopting those. Do you agree with that? I mean, no. No. What are you buying? Give us the sauce, bro, please. <laughs> Let them cook. I would say a really good ecosystem right now is Ton. T O N. It's the Telegram open network. So the founder of Telegram, if you follow the history of Telegram, he launched an ICO mm -hmm. and the SEC sued him. It was over a billion dollar crazy ICO and he had to refund everybody. But then they kind of launched it in a decentralized way and they're building a ton of crazy. So it's the currency of the Telegram ecosystem. So if you're gonna bet on something that already exists, that mm -hmm. has tons of users, that is actually well developed, I've been looking a lot at the Ton ecosystem. It's a $2 billion market cap. It's not a small coin, but it has something that's actually backing it that has a decade plus of history trackable winning teams. I think that that's a probably a good place to look, bro. So you don't think the government is gonna switch over to these ISO 2022 tokens? I'm not saying they're not, but I, dude, I've been buying XRP since 2016. like the amount of opportunities that mm -hmm. have come and gone if had my money been elsewhere and not, when is the government going to approve this thing that I don't even know what it is? Right. XRP, $500. Like, <laughs> bro, like, come on, dude. Like, who are the people telling you these things? Now, I have thesis about Ripple. It's not whether it's going to go or not go. Mm -hmm. It's a simple fact of, is there more, opportunity elsewhere? Is there better opportunity elsewhere? And am I willing to lose this boat if it ever happens to capture another one? And yeah, X XRP is just, it's there's too much capital already in it, bro. There's other opportunities out there for sure. Are you doing any boring investments? Like do you, does Luke Belmar have a 401k? No. Do you have health insurance? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, yes, I have health insurance. I mean, I have all the normal, but my investment strategy is very simple. Be super liquid uh have minimal assets that require maintenance so i don't like to have things that require my mental framework and my mental real estate to be occupied by i need to pay this mortgage or mm -hmm. uh, hey my my mclaren the battery of my mclaren's dead or i have to go pick up this car i don't like these things they can be if people want to fill up their life with those troubles that's fine i don't like that asset class that asset class can appreciate i don't like it i like three asset classes one on my the hard assets i like gold and silver why because i can exchange these things anywhere in the world for mm -hmm. a fair price right we all can agree that i can move a thousand dollars of gold anywhere and sell it for a thousand dollars same thing can go with bitcoin but i can do it in a digital way yes the price fluctuates yes uh there's a little bit more uncertainty but i can take a hundred thousand dollars and move it from here to lithuania with a hard drive and nobody would ask me a question if I was to take $100,000 worth of gold bars 
mm -hmm. from here to Lithuania, bro, they would be all over me. So you have those digital assets. That's a good investment. Remember, we're talking liquid. You have your physical assets mm -hmm. and then you have cash. Cash, you need to be banking on winning economies and on the strongest economies. People say the US, okay, but what, what's better? Tell me what, what currency's up next that isn't another piece of But ours is backed by what? The military, dude. Play with our currency, boom. What happened last time you played with the currency? Look what happened with uh, Gaddafi, who tried to establish the Pan-African uh, currency that was backed by gold. Boom, civil eruption, mm -hmm. death. Look at Kennedy. Kennedy tried to establish the silver-backed dollars Six months later, boom, back. Abraham Lincoln, he wanted to uh, establish the greenback dollars, which was his way of being able to pay the army. Six months later, pa, hmm. it's crazy, bro. So uh, the winning currency, you have to have some of the winning currency. In this case, it's the dollar. You f with the winning currency, bro, the people that own the currency are gonna come after you. They're coming. They came after Bitcoin. That's why they own Bitcoin. That's why they own Binance Exchange now. Mm -hmm. They own it all. Because remember, you buy Bitcoin with dollars. Right. If you have unlimited dollars. Now you have to bet and put some money on these empires. Mm -hmm. So U.S. dollar, uh, Swiss franc, banking capital of the world, and Singaporean dollar. I think it's pretty good when it comes to its uh, price fluctuation versus the dollar, which I think is about 8%. So on your mm -hmm. cash banking on those empires on the digital side have digital assets that you can move that are liquid and physical gold physical silver things how like do that. you actually go about like technically about getting the swiss franc do you just go on a forex exchange like how do you hold the so, franc yeah i mean you can literally get cash or you can uh find foreign exchanges that will actually let you remit different payments there's also different um banking accounts but it's not for like small mm -hmm. uh individuals where you can have different currencies so you can get i think i think there's companies like air wallets i'm not sure air wallets i think it has like a multi-currency bank account so you can have like hong kong dollars singaporean dollars australian dollars us dollars you can kind of have multiple bank accounts so i think you can store your wealth in that way or just getting cash in my case you can have swiss bank accounts things like that mm. but that's for later on what about the gold journey. You have to find a place that you can actually hold gold. Play, go online. You can buy gold online, mm -hmm. buy silver online, or you can actually hold it in places that uh, store it for you. Yeah, but I don't like that. I feel like push comes the shove. And like you, we get to a position where you have to actually take that gold. Like, what are you going to do? Fly to these different locations and collect them? And that's, but that's the kind of the thing. It's, it's, you need, if you're going to have assets, mm -hmm. you need to choose which assets you're going to have and where you're going to put them. If you say, okay, you're going to own a house. Well, that's even worse under that same premise because you can't even move that. What, what about a boat? What about another piece of uh, real estate or something that you kids not nimble? So you kind of have to play the cards because there is a risk factor in everything. Yeah, Bitcoin, you can move it everywhere, but that could dump 40%. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> but so absolutely no real estate. I don't like real estate, bro. I, and I've tried to like it. Right. And I know it's good, mm -hmm. but I personally would much rather rent a beautiful house that i don't have to deal with all the issues than to even have to bother with the issues i already have enough issues with paying the electrical bill in places that i rent it's like already i don't like dealing with that honestly i don't blame you like lately i've been thinking about how great it would be to just live in an apartment because like i'd spend so much time just doing the little things like, oh i gotta take out the trash i gotta make sure these bushes are trimmed and i know you can hire that out but, but the thing you're is still even thinking if, even if you it. hire that out now you have somebody in your house and now yeah. that's invasive as so now you're playing that <laughs> side of the lane, which is like, dude, now I ha now my house is a hotel. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> I, I played both lanes, bro. I got the big house uh -huh. and I had to downgrade from that. I'm like, okay, I got a $4 million house. Dude, I had people in my house every day. Yeah. I had cleaners, I had the plumber, I live in Puerto Rico. So now you have all the electricity issues and all the humidity issues. Within a year, I was out of that. Bro. Dude, I was I like, I can't that. live this way. I genuinely sat down with my wife and like, we talked about it. I might have to, like, I don't know it's about just like, this. It's just finding, once again, bro, it's it's falling for what people have told you it's the best way to live. Test it out. If it works for you, perfect. Keep it. If it's not, mm -hmm. okay, I tested it. I don't like it. Next. Yeah, same thing that. with your house. Same thing with assets, whatever, bro. Play your game. But I do like how you can touch a house like as an investment. For sure, bro. I mean, yeah, because it's, 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 like it's real. Little floating little coins, the papers. It, you know. <laughs> yes, but what is holding the value of this? How, uh, what is, why is this worth half a million dollars and not worth 300000 
at the end of the day, even if it's not, like you could still stay here. You could chill exactly. at the crib. But I can also exchange my Bitcoin and buy a house. Well, if everything just completely shuts down. If everything shuts down, then I think the least of our problems will be finding a place to live. It's interesting. I was talking with the governor of the Central Bank of Albania, and he said, people have never really faced crisis. He's like, people don't understand what full lockdown, grid shutdown is. And he was talking about in the 90s when Albania was about to hit default, 90s or early 2000s. He said, the civil unrest that took place when people were not able to tap into their money, he said was insane. They had to fly uh, airplane loads of cash to the Central Bank of Albania, show it through the windows to convince people that they had the money to hold the deposit so people wouldn't bank on the Central Bank. It's crazy. So under that premise that the only thing propping this up is the fact that there's financial stability. If there anything ever goes down, there's civil unrest, financial arrest, everything goes to hell, right? Like I don't, I'm not, I probably won't even be here. <laughs> where would you be? I don't know, somewhere where actually currency's moving around clearly and flowing. Like you look at China now, dude, you look at central bank digital currencies, you look at uh, the centralization of information, you look at lockdowns, you look at uh, the vaccination status and the correlation mm -hmm. of that with your money and your WeChat. It gets really, really, really bad, really, really fast when you start playing with people. So you don't think you need like a cabin in the woods stocked up with supplies and, and guns and stuff? I mean, yeah, why not? It's like, why not, dude? Yeah, go have a couple of ranches in Patagonia. <laughs> That's Argentina? Yeah, it would be nice. Have you been? I haven't, but I'd love to visit. I've been hearing great Do you things. snowboard or ski? Do you do any of those? Snowboard. Okay, good. We should do a trip. Argentina? Uh, Antarctica. Nah. <laughs> Why not? That's you, crazy. There's ski there's skiing out yeah. there? Are you able to go there? Yeah. I thought it was like off, <laughs> off grid for the feds, you know. No, That's no, the bro. circle around the, the, the ice pizza. wall. The ice wall, bro. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just go snowboard on the ice wall. On the ice wall? Why not? They allow you? Bro, I mean, that unless the drone shoot us down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> now I, I have heard some crazy theories from you though. You 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 don't believe the moon landing? Oh, I tweeted about the other day. No, nah, the moon this come on, it's fake. Now, I'm not saying the moon isn't real or that people haven't been to the moon. Mm -hmm. That first moon landing is... So from technological advancement, first, okay, we land in the 60s. The evidence looks weirdest. We have all these videos of... Have you seen all the videos from NASA people like with wires and strings? Have you seen those? They're a little across? sus, but... They're, they're a little <laughs> sus. They're just a little sus. Like when you do things authentically, there shouldn't be anything sus. It's just... But when there is something sus and it's run by the government and it's tens of billions of dollars every year, you're like, hmm... Where is this money going? Maybe I want to know. Uh, you're also competing against uh, the Russians during the Cold War. There is a big push towards kind of calming down the, the, the public. Uh, and they kind of, I don't know. I don't buy it, bro. 60 years later, what's the best thing we have? We lost the tech. They can't find it. They can't recreate it. And it's too expensive to put people on the moon. It costs them. Twenty billion dollars, hmm. two hundred and fifty billion dollars in today's currency. If you adjust it for inflation, they printed a hundred billion dollars and tossed it to Ukraine. If they wanted to put people on the moon, they could. They can't. I, I mean, or maybe yeah, they can. Who it. knows, bro? I don't Who know, knows? bro. Who knows? But Elon's gonna do it. Mars? Yeah, bro, for sure. I don't know. For sure, bro. You're signed up, huh? Yeah, bro. I'm, I'm getting the Neuralink implant. I'm the first in line, bro. I'm getting the Neuralink implant, and I'm and I'm connecting my social security number mm -hmm. to my to my Twitter account, yeah, so that's that a good so call. I can feed the AI. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's my plan, bro. Move. That's my plan. And I'm gonna eat seed oils, mm -hmm. uh, and tap water, and I'm gonna make sure that my girl is on birth control. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Are you? Uh, that's the plan, bro. Yeah, that's a good plan. Speaking of wealth and health. Mm. Um, what are you doing? What should everybody be doing besides, you know, I tell people it was funny. I was, I was talking with a couple of people in my community the other day and I said, people don't even do the lazy things. Right. And they're like, what do you mean? It's like, people don't even go to sleep on time. Like that's the lazy <laughs> that you could do for your health. And you don't even go to bed on time. <laughs> like, okay, perfect. I, we can talk about your abs. We can talk about your food, but unless you get the basic things, the lazy like brushing your teeth, like showering. <laughs> These things are health and nutrition. <laughs> I am pointing fingers, bro. 
Um, <laughs> but Bro. sleep is very important. So you have uh, your circadian rhythm. You have your REM sleep. Sleep is really important for recovery. Sleep is really important for mental health. But people don't sleep well. So I think people, we begin from the basics, they mm -hmm. need to learn how to sleep well. How do you sleep well? A couple things. First, you need to cut out processed sugars, complex carbs, and heavy foods at night. Your body does not do very well when you eat heavy at night. Your body is supposed to be recovering, resting, repairing itself, regenerating. Ideally, you should also be fasting. Your body should enter periodically stages of autophagy. Autophagy is when your body begins to eat the bad cells up. This happens about three days into a fast. Mm -hmm. Fasting is incredible. So the simple things, people are like, what do I need to do? No, no, no. What do you not need to do first? Let's get rid of all, all the toxicity before we bring in anything good. So before we start, you know, assembling the dinner table, let's clear out all the that's already on there. That's not good. That's not serving you. And let's fix that sleep. Don't eat processed sugars. Don't eat complex carbs. Stay away from fruit juice. Stay away from candy. Stay away from fast food in perpetuity. Stay away from tap water. And if you're a woman, consult with your doctor to potentially get off of birth control pills, which are a f psyop that has been perpetrated on women in the last I don't know, couple decades. Before that, women were never on birth control. But for some reason, now we have hundreds of millions of them. And the reason and the logic is because men can't keep their in their pants. Not a good is, enough is that explanation. Hormonal? Like the birth control? I mean, you know, it's interesting because I've talked to a lot of women about when they were recommended mm -hmm. to get on birth control and it's usually in their early teens. And it has to do when their hormones are all out of whack and it's supposed to calibrate them. But what you're doing is you're bioregulating the body outside of what it's supposed to be doing in its natural process. So once a woman gets out of her birth control mm -hmm. uh, kind of cycle, her hormones go through the roof and all over the place because they've been with for an extremely long time. It's something that people should really look into. I mean, you do. You know what's the craziest part about that? What? You know when Alex Jones said that the tap water is turning frogs gay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I tell you something about that? Please. Okay. What if the treatment plants, women take the estrogen pill, mm -hmm. right? That's what the birth control is, basically superpowered estrogen. And remember, when you take a pill orally, most of it gets urinated. Mm -hmm. The estrogen, heavy urinated estrogen, gets peed into the, what? The water stream. That water stream, water, is known as what? A recyclable commodity. Mm. So water just gets recycled. What? Through what? A treatment plant. Mm -hmm. You're drinking water full of piss and estrogen if you drink tap water. Just I so drink you know. spring water. Good. <laughs> uh, not you, but I'm saying in general. So the treatment plant, the water goes to the treatment plant. It doesn't treat for estrogen. Look it up. And that water comes back to the tap. So now you have men, believe it or not, like it or not, drinking estrogen water. Now, does this provoke to the feminization of men? Yes or no? Who knows? But all we do know. It's that it's turning frogs from male to female, and it's happened. Now, is that a conspiracy? Is that a, a crazy mm -hmm. out of the, out of the blue, perspective to have? All I will say is that when the New York mayor goes on video, opens a tap water, drinks it, says, ah, "New York tap water is the best," and I know he's a politician, I don't trust him. And under that same premise, I'm like, eh, anything the gov government gives me that's free is probably not good. I mean, that's hard to argue against because what you're saying makes sense. You do take the pill, you do piss it out, and we recycle the water to drink. So it like you can't really argue. With and the treatment plant doesn't treat for estrogen. But they can? But they don't. They can, though? That's I don't know. I haven't gone to that complexity, but they don't treat for estrogen. They got to get a reverse osmosis machine, huh? <laughs> they just don't drink tap water. There's places in the world where you can potentially get away with tap water, but why would you drink water? You don't know what's in the pipes. You don't know mm -hmm. the quality of the water. The, bro, look at all the f***ing movies. Look at the Dark Knight, dude. They're out here trying to kill the city up through the water supply. The public that's water weird. supply. Yeah, it's that's crazy, the way to do dude. it. <laughs> but do you ever just have like a fun little drink or a fun little snack? Uh, uh, yeah, bro. I'll have a little bit of cannabis. Do you smoke weed? I don't. Have you ever smoked weed? 
No. You hesitated there. Are your parents watching? They might be. Well, the closest <laughs> I got was I used to work at a job, and I was driving the guys to a job site. So you you got you got hot boxed. I got hot boxed, and I didn't even realize it. But they were ripping like a pen in the back, and I almost ended up crashing. Like I might del- <laughs> I'm, I'm slow trying to slow down the car. So you got hot boxed. Okay. Uh, that's that, that's probably every now and then my guilty pleasure. Cannabis. I, yeah, a little cannabis, a little Bob Marley. So no fun snack, just the cannabis? No, bro. I You I, don't eat a bag of chips ever? Never, bro. You're lying. Never, bro. A little talkies? It's so <laughs> gross, bro. It's disgusting. Why why would you it's would you cheat on your wife once? No. Why? That's cheating, cheating, Because it's disgusting. Why would you cheat on yourself? I wouldn't say having a little bag of chips every once yeah, in a while. And having cheating. a little side isn't that bad either. Yeah, it is. You're breaking the covenant of and marriage. You're breaking, and We're you're talking breaking, about break you're breaking the covenant with yourself. The thing is, I you don't have, have a covenant that, and, I that, and, that <laughs> and that's the difference, brother. I've committed myself to the purity of my vessel, mm. something that you are supposed to commit to if you're a Christian. When you're did not you do supposed that? to contaminate yourself with you the food of the, the temple. Was that like a and conscious... remember and remember what the Bible says? If you do not what take care of the temple, mm-hmm. God will destroy it. It's in the Bible, and if you believe the Bible, well, then you better start taking care of your vessel. When did you lock in like this? After I had my first psychedelic experience, mm. guys, mushrooms are crazy. Would you recommend them yes, to bro. me? Yes. Uh, to TJ? Me? <laughs> yes, bro. He's 18. He's, no, bro. That's are, crazy. Is, is, that, legal, that's is, he, is he of age? Can you, can you? That's reckless. Why? Isn't that like dangerous? That's mind altering. Recommending that to like millions of people online, especially like. Brother, I got a clip that went viral that had a million likes that said everybody should do mushrooms. Uh-huh. Everybody should do mushrooms. Everybody should do mushrooms. Why? I have been to the Amazon forest where there's five-year-old kids taking ayahuasca and they're local Indian kids. Like they're local Indians, they're local tribesmen, chilling. Now, would I recommend it for the entire world? No, you but I would said. recommend it to you guys. <laughs> you just said everybody should. I'll make videos where that'll go viral. Okay. <laughs> but where I'm saying take mushrooms. I'm not <laughs> telling to a million people, bro. When I did a podcast, I did a podcast recently. I was talking to this girl. I said, take mushrooms. That clip went viral. I was talking to her. This clip will go viral. Guys, take some mushrooms. It'll be good for your yeah, mental reset. Aren't you kind of worried about the impact you're having? Because some people it's might see impact. that video. It's great impact. It's great impact. <laughs> why, do, why do you think they're so good? Try them. <laughs> I'm scared, bro. <laughs> That's why. You, you know why you fear something? What is fear? Just being scared. I don't know. What do Un- you, unknown. When can you fear something? When, when you don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. The you thing think? is, I know what's going to happen. That's why I can tell you, not as an idiot, for you to learn that I maybe know something that you don't. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's spiritual? Like, yeah. do you enter a spiritual realm when you take mushrooms? Well, what is a, what is what is what is a spiritual realm? Define just, spiritual realm. Just another realm, or do you think it's just chemicals getting released in your brain? I mean. What do you mean by a different realm? Explain. Well, here's the thing. We were talking to somebody this week, and they were a big mushroom mushroom proponent, and they were saying that a lot of people who take mushrooms, they have a similar experience, and they almost meet in, like, a realm. Like, there's overlapping uh, experiences. Like, they'll meet in, like, this white room, and then on Reddit, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I've been to that. And there's, like, these beings. beings that judge you. So do you enter, like, a new world? Is it a portal? I mean, I think that there's different dimensions. And I think that psychedelics do tap you into different dimensions, uh, just like this is a dimension. So I guess if you're on the same vibrational frequency as somebody else, you could potentially be in the same metaverse space. So it's not just chemicals. No, it's absolutely not. I mean, if, if you break down everything to just chemical reactions, then nothing is really real. Then your relationship with your girl isn't really real. Love isn't real. It's just chemical reactions that you're just kind of navigating life through as as a soup of fluid that's just walking around in a, in a sack of meat, right? That's so, a good point. So I think, I think you have to be okay with the super natural, not the non-natural, the super natural experiences. Because when you begin to evaluate, uh, when people receive epiphanies, like Solomon, like David, like Jacob, like Paul, like John, a lot of these guys go into transcendental states. Do they go into transcendental states with psychedelics or not? I don't know, but they go into transcendental states to have spiritual experiences. Can you have spiritual experiences 
through non-transcendental psychedelic experiences? Absolutely. But would you say, for example, me going into a state of meditation is a good thing or a bad thing? What would define state of meditation? Me going into a deep state where I am hyper-focused on my spirit as opposed to the environment and the things that are happening. You could call it a prayerful state. I like prayerful state, see? But you see, the thing is you've attributed, and th that goes back to what I'm just saying, yeah, right? It's these words. Yeah. It's the dogma. It's the belief system. It's the fact that I know something about meditation that you don't, mm -hmm. and you believe that you know something about meditation that has given you the conviction and has limited your ability to do what? To experience life. And you don't have to go out and experience crap, right? That's not what I'm saying. You don't have to go out and sleep with a prostitute. You still have to have moderation and you still have to have intelligence and you still have to have wisdom and not everything is for everybody. But to neglect yourself experiences of life simply because you say, I am afraid, solve that fear with knowledge. And if you can't find that knowledge, go to sources and people that you trust and convey with them, talk to them, dialogue with them, and then develop your own thesis. Don't just say, well, I'm not going to do this because I'm afraid, or I'm not going to do this because my mom said so. Yeah. Well, what if the, the answer isn't, I'm afraid? What if it's just, I don't care to? Then don't do it. Just like I don't care to jump from, a, from an airplane. Right. I don't care to do that, and I'm not going to do that. Am I losing an experience of life by not doing that yes i'm okay with that and just the same way with mushroom it's the same thing with everything else do you think it's at all dangerous yeah i mean everything is dangerous uh one outside of moderation and two is understanding that when you enter spiritual states you need to be spiritually equipped and most people enter spiritual states that are ulterior spiritual states and they assume that everything that they experience in that ulterior state because it's ulterior is true. And the truth is most things are false. And that goes for everything in life, even the things that you interact with in spiritual dimensions. But I feel like with mushrooms, you're almost, because you said you could enter those dimensions for in sure. other ways, through prayer, through mm -hmm. be, be meditation. But don't you think that mushrooms are kind of brute forcing it? Yes. So you definitely it's, it's might not code. be ready for it. Absolutely. And that's where you can get messed up. That's where, where people come out of it, different people. Yes. And, that can and be most negative. of them come out better people. But because not all. To, because, to, because to not be ready does not mean that it's not good. Most people, you weren't ready for marriage. You're never going to be ready for kids. But when it happens to you, you'll be like, mm, that's pretty good. I don't know, man. I don't, I, I don't believe that everybody should take Shrew's message. All right, man, what are you doing next? You're going hard on YouTube? I... I think I want to start posting more on YouTube okay. and my goal is to continue building Capital Club. Why, brother? I think the reason I want to build Capital Club, and I appreciate you asking me that, is because I think I have a really good opportunity at rewiring the aspiring entrepreneur and the developed entrepreneur into an ecosystem that allows them to be authentic, that allows them to network with individuals that actually care about them, to find knowledge that's not based on profit, but it's based on experience, which is hard to find. And my reputation is unassailable. My reputation speaks for itself. And I've maintained a good reputation by doing good business. And I think that Capital Club is kind of the unifier of all, all the communities on the internet as kind of that town square for people to come and hang out. And just because I was able to make money before mm -hmm. kind of gives me the ability to not have to milk the, the out of my audience like most people would do because i've made money so it puts me in a very special situation to really be able to build a very powerful movement towards the development of self which is my entire mission becoming the best version of who you are meant to be the jews believe that they believe that it's very interesting they have this this philosophy that if you do not fulfill your fullest potential that it's sin christians don't believe that christians believe that you can just be and that's okay I can, do you want me to tell you scripture to prove that? Okay. I feel like we're, we're diving too deep to speak on the capital club thing. If well, you, you asked just, me what I'm doing next. All right. But why, let's why hear, let's, let's hear do, do you not, do, do you care about what I'm doing next? Do you, do, do you care about what I I'm do. doing next? I do. That's why I want to get to the bottom of it. So why am I, I going to keep, keep asking too deep why? on the capital club? <laughs> I want to, I want to ask 
if you just care about that, why not make it free? Like I sell a course, I'll, it's for money. Because I have to pay for my time. My time is valuable. Money exists for a reason. It's a vehicle in exchange of what? Value. Perfect. What do you think I'm going to go do with that money? Spend it on shrooms. No. I'm going to continue doing what I've done. Continue building Capital Club. So you're not going to blow it on a Lambo? I don't need a Lamborghini. You're I not, told, you're I've not into cars at all? I mean, if you go, if you were listening to me. I was. But you said McLaren. You didn't say Lambo. You said McLaren. Come on. You said McLaren. You, know this, you said McLaren. You can't do this to me. <laughs> you already know my ethos. You know what I stand for. I'll have, I have fancy houses. I have nice things. When you're purpose driven, mm -hmm. you're not driven by money. And I will make a ton of money, but it doesn't drive me. And I will get rich in proportion to the value that I provide to the marketplace. That's why Elon Musk doesn't make his cars free. But what's the or point if you're not going to do cost. good things? What's the point of making money if you're not going to enjoy it a little? I'm going to enjoy it. I just enjoy it in different ways. I enjoy it in travel. I enjoy it by giving my team bonuses. I enjoy it by scaling my team. I enjoy it by doing events. 2024, we're doing dozens of events all over the world. Mm -hmm. That costs money. I have to fly 20 people. It's not cheap. Who's going to pay for that? The club pays for that. How does the club pay for it? With memberships. Just like the Ritz Carlton has a member. I'm, I'm a member of the Ritz Carlton Reserve. You know how much my mem membership was? It wasn't free. It was 100 grand. And then $1,000 a month maintenance fee. Have you benefited? Of course. The people that actually pay $100,000 with me are the people that I want to hang out with. So I go to the jacuzzi and I'm hanging out with billionaires. You don't believe it? Okay, that you don't believe it. That's fine. That's because you haven't paid $100,000 for a membership. <laughs> <laughs> so when you do, you'll realize that there's value in the mm -hmm. network. So you pay to play because that's the name of the game. And if you're a cheap, well, that's exactly what you're going to get in life. Scarcity. I pay to play just like you would do in any RPG game. Just like you would do in any MMO, you literally use your coins to level up your character and to unlock different levels. I do it. You do it. Name of the game. I don't play video games. You are <laughs> living in a video game, and that's the ultimate choice. You're either going to be a bot, an NPC that runs off the scripts, brother, and that's your choice, or you're going to choose your scripts, become a glitch, and forge your own path. There's two choices. Glitch, a person, and Jesus was the original glitch. I don't know, man. You're, t you're calling glitches your fan base, and now you're gonna—that's no. that, almost a no. heresy. That's no. It's a little disrespectful. Is it disrespectful to call him a glitch? What is a glitch? Your fan base. No. What is a glitch? I, you asked me what a glitch was. A glitch is someone who defies the matrix. Perfect. So what you're telling me is that I've identified a definition to a word. Would so you're you just say, making would you up say, your own words? Yeah. Why not? Words are just made up constructs of thoughts and ideas. Are they not? That's cult leader behavior. No, it's not. It is. You, you, you got to define the words. The, wor the word glitch everything. is the word. Look up the definition of a glitch. It's a dictionary definition. Look it's, it up, it's, it's a, it's a def it's all comes down to very simple principles. The principles of software and hardware. You have a glitch in the software. It breaks the software. You run off the normal scripts. You're a bot. You're coded. It's very simple. It's not cultish behavior. It's very straightforward language. You just haven't been able to identify yourself as a glitch yet, but you are, mm. hopefully. Does knowing all of this hinder your happiness at all? I'm just kind of, I don't want to put any words in your mouth. I respect you, but when, when you're just more carefree, well, you can be happy with anything, right? But for you, if you know so much and you understand so much, does that make life more difficult? No, because that's under the assumption that happiness is what I'm pursuing. You don't want to be happy? I didn't say that. It's not my pursuit because happiness is a chemical reaction if you're pursuing a chemical reaction then it's always going to be fleeting i'm pursuing experiencing life and pursuing truth Which i've said this again and again but you guys aren't listening to me i love you guys but listen to me when i speak it comes back to truth guys literally all of it my business my conversation with you guys my conversation with myself the exploration of truth figuring things out having uncomfortable conversations say, saying things that might all in the pursuit of truth brother and all with good intentions